Hey everyone, welcome to Carrie's Garage. And on this episode, we're gonna take a little break from working on the engine and we're gonna do the brakes on the bug. Well, we got the bug sitting here in the garage. Got all the brake parts that I got for it. New hoses, wheel cylinders, master cylinder laid out. Got to go ahead and break loose all the wheel nuts and I did break loose the center nut for the back brakes. Once I get the wheels uh, all loosened up, I'll go ahead and get it jacked up and put on jack stands. And one of the other great things, I took the fuel tank out a while back so we can access the master cylinder with ease. Makes it so much easier to do it without the gas tank and then trying to do it from underneath. Not impossible, but just makes it so much easier. All right, the car is all jacked up now. Lug nuts. I think these are lug nuts because they've got a stud converter on it. They're all loose, so we're gonna go ahead and get the wheel off and get the drum off. This side I'd already taken apart several years ago when I was gonna do the brakes, but then the project got halted. So I won't be able to do anything on this side because it's already taken apart, but I am gonna clean it up, clean up all the bearings and all the surfaces, and we'll get all the new parts put in. We'll go ahead and go to the other side and take that one apart. And I don't think I took that side apart, but I don't know, we'll see. And I was wrong. This one does still have the lug bolts. They're a little bit different for the alloy wheels, but they're still bolts, not too bad. Overall, drum brakes are pretty easy to deal with. They're just kind of monotonous and annoying. There's so many components. And at some point, I would like to put disc brakes on the front of this. But for now, this will work and it'll be all nice and fresh. And it appears I also took this side apart. Now I just have to remember how it all goes back together. Probably need to look at some reference pictures, but now we'll get the wheel cylinders off, the adjusters, the hoses, and start cleaning everything up. Well, the backing plate is fairly clean. Went ahead and took the adjusters, clean them up a bit. I'm gonna put some anti-seize lubricant on them, put them back in, and then we'll fit the wheel cylinder and start putting the shoes back in. Well, there we go. This side is all back together. Had to kind of remember what springs went where and how the shoes were oriented. I thought the shoes were quite a bit better than these, so I am going to end up ordering some new shoes. But for now, this is about functionality to get the brakes to work. I still have so much to do on the engine, and then when this is an actual car back on the road, I'll go ahead and put new shoes on. But we'll have the hydraulics all nicely replaced. Got the new wheel cylinder and the new hose. One thing to always remember when you do brakes, any of the, the friction points where the shoe touches the backing plate, always add a little bit of grease there. You don't want it to bind up or you know wear through the metal. And same with the adjusters, I always put a little bit of anti-seize just to make sure they don't bind up. I've had plenty of those that they just lock up into place, rust. Uh, so you know, put a little bit of lubricant there and you'll be good. All right, front brakes on the driver's front axle are all back together. I went and cleaned up the bearings, 
repack them nicely. Clean up the surfaces really well. Get some nice grease in there. And now what we need to do is put the retainer back on and eh, a little bit of grease. Preload this a bit. So go ahead and put the washer back in. Now this is keyed. I don't know if you can see it, kind of cool. It's original Volkswagen part. And if you're wondering what this guy right here is, if you don't know, that's actually what drives the speedometer. So then we go ahead and put this, sorry about all the bells in the background, it's a little bit windy. Gonna put this guy back on. Look at that, it spins quite nicely. So what I do might be a little bit off, I don't know. Some of the stuff I do might be right or wrong, it's just what I do and it works for me, is I tighten this up and I preload it to where just the washer barely moves. Because you don't want these bearings too tight, but you don't want them too loose. You don't want the, the drum moving around. So I go ahead and tighten that up, get it all situated, and then we'll put the dust cap on. So what I do is I tighten it more than it should, which you definitely don't want to do because it'll burn up the bearing. And that doesn't move. So then what I do after it's a bit tighter, so I back it off a little bit. And that washer barely moves. So it's pretty much exactly where I want it. And I take this guy and we tighten it down. And once that's tight, go ahead and take the dust cap to make sure that it goes through for the speedometer drive. See what I can do is I took it out of the back of the speedometer and I can push it through. And then we tighten it down and it's good. All right, all four wheels are essentially done. Got new wheel cylinders in, got the new brake hoses up front, but it appears the back brake hoses are not correct, so I'm gonna have to get some new ones. Now, we need to yank out the master cylinder. Man, it's so much easier without the gas tank right here and just being able to reach down. I seem to have forgotten to get some new hoses, these blue brake fluid hoses, so I need to order a set of those or go to a supplier here in town and get some. So for now, we're gonna put the brake master cylinder in, but we're not gonna actually bleed it since I need to get those new rear hoses correct and get those hoses, but for now, we'll get the master in. So to do the master cylinder, it's pretty simple. There's the pedal cluster right there and we're in the car, I gotta peel the carpet back a little bit. There's two bolts that go through the pan to the other side that hold the master in. So we gotta get those bolts out and then undo the pin that holds it to the pedal. Maybe, maybe I can just do it to where, actually we'll try and do it just by pulling the, the pin out the face of the master. Two bolts in the master cylinder. Oh man, these things have been here for a while. And this carpet is kind of a pain. Oh, I guess the roller came off of the gas pedal right there to reattach that. All right, so the master cylinder is loose. Go ahead and get the lines undone here. I did break them loose a little bit earlier. It is so nice having a Southwest car where these lines are actually serviceable. Most of the times they just get so rusted and you just, it's a lost cause and you have to replace them. So it's a great thing about down here. Here we have the old master and the new master. Always something with Volkswagens I've discovered after doing this plenty of times is always make sure that there's the right holes and fittings and everything. There's so many different variants. And as you can tell, there's an outlet right here and right here for the front circuit and a single outlet for the back circuit. This one matches. It does have a plug right there. I've seen those where they were just open or that was missing. So we're also going to have to go ahead and take these pressure switches out of the old master. If I clean them up a little bit, put them in. Kind of an annoying thing that Volkswagen does is they use two pressure switches for your brake lights. And it also is part of the brake warning circuit. So if 
one gets pressure and the other one does it, the little warning light on the dash will come on. And there we have it, new master cylinder ready to go in. Yes, I know people say I should bench blade it. I'm not gonna bench blade it right now. What I'll do is when it's time to actually get the system bled, I'll take the lines off and I'll just bleed it while it's in the car just to get it going. Never had a problem with doing that before. All right, so we'll go ahead and slip in the new master. There's the pin right there. I did not end up taking the clevis pin out of the pedal. Let's go ahead and slide it in like that. Now here's one of the annoying parts is you have to go in the car to put the bolts in, but the master cylinder is outside the car. So sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain. And there we go. Just like that, it's bolted in. I do find that if you at least put one of the hard lines into the master cylinder, it holds it in place a little bit to not shoot forward when you put the bolts through the pan. Well, there we go. Just like that, we have a new master cylinder installed. I went ahead and just put these hoses to cap it off. Just so no dirt or junk would get in there. Got the brake light switch plugs in, all the hoses. These lines are nice and tight, so should be good to go. Once I get those hoses and the new rear hoses, then we can bleed it and make the brakes work. All right, while the car's in the garage, I just wanted to fiddle with the sunroof just a little bit. We'll see if I can get it open just a hair so I can drop down the panel right here to access all the controls. So what I do is just pry it just a little bit with the screwdriver to kind of help it along. And then while I do that, just kind of turn it and just like that. It is opening up. I want to be able to get to all the cables and everything and start figuring out what I need to fix and replace you because I know this has probably been stripped out. So now what I do that it is a bit open, you know, this is all completely destroyed. So I can just reach up in there. Usually you would do it from the face of it. You pull it down, take the clips out and then you are able to slide this piece right here. And just like that, you get access to the screws on the front part. And we'll take those loose, slide it out, and then be able to see what's going on. All right, so now it's part of the way open. This right here is what's the killer of old sunroof cars. You get all this dirt debris after it sits, the cables get bound up, and then it just starts stripping and it's all chaos. So with it partly open, I vacuumed all the junk, but just so you can see, there's the back right there for the lifter. And then I discovered that there was actually a missing nut on this side. So we're gonna have to figure that one out. But now what we do is I got this one started. Go ahead and take this nut off, make sure to not lose it. Go ahead and put that down right here. If it wants to behave, probably not. Okay, there we go. The other thing as well, these were attached right here, but I already took those off. So now that we take the screwdriver, and just remember, don't ever force anything. This is some old stuff. We just kind of work this guy free. And now, go outside the car, as you can see. Now we can actually remove the entire sunroof panel. There we go, it's now out. So now we'll be able to inspect the cables, the lifters, 
vacuum some more. The other big uh, problem with these sunroof cars is there's actually some channels right here, some tubes that are meant to drain water. When these things sit for a long time, or you know, especially in a dirty climate, dusty climate out here, they, they get clogged up and then water will pull here and it'll start rusting. So it's definitely a concern to always make sure to clean and make sure those are nice and free. So another thing we'll go ahead and do while we're here is we're gonna take, the, I got the screws out of this cover, we're gonna go ahead and take it off. Here are the cables for the sunroof. And there's actually a little kind of a cog wheel right here. So there it is. A lot of times this guy will get stripped out along with the cables. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna replace these cables. I am probably gonna to have to replace this guy but I'm gonna lubricate all this up and just make it work a little bit better right now. All right, so now that I got the sunroof all open, I went ahead and cleaned everything as best as I could right now and lubricated it, put the sunroof panel back in. I said I just wanted to make it so I could clean it out and make it slightly functionable. It needs work, I need to get a few parts of it, but for now, this will definitely do. I left the sunroof headliner section out since I need to get some parts. The issue with that missing nut that was here is the lifter isn't working correctly. So when I want to properly put it up, got to help it. But now it's fully closed and it's sealed as best as it can. The rubber gasket needs to be replaced. But for now, this will definitely do and it's quite a bit better than it was. All right, well, that'll do it for this episode of the Sunbug Resurrection Part 3. On the next episode, we're going to paint some more tins, take the carburetor apart, mess around with the distributor, and just keep working on it. We're getting closer, though. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.